This is <coughs> it's Coogan Cassius, MCK, uh, IFL. I mean, um, <coughs> right, I'm joined here today by Eddie Erm, uh, head of what fight week for White Revas. Eddie, how you doing? Hey, motherfuckers, I'm back. Obviously, I uh, bet you miss me, haven't you, motherfuckers? <laughs> yeah, all you promoters out there, I'm back. It's pay per view fight week in England. Obviously, uh. <coughs> I spoke to uh, all the other promoters this week, um, basically asked them every question they wanted me to ask them. Eddie, do you think you're giving value for the fans this week for pay-per-view? A lot of people moaning, a lot of people think you're a prick, a um, lot of people think you're arrogant, um, big mouth, um, you know, you expected to get booed out of the O2 on Saturday? Let me tell you something, if you don't want to watch it, don't pay for it! 20 pound, what more do you want? White Rebus, Alan Price, Bill Kachizora, Bill and Smith versus Rappaul, Duffield versus Aziz, 20 quid, what more do you fucking want, mate? <laughs> I'm busy, I'm busy. <laughs> I don't always cut. That, that, was, that was really funny. Can I, I just say, yeah. I know you had an Eddie Hearn mask on, but that was not my comments. What? You know, obviously, it was a very aggressive pitch. You know, this pay per view is totally up to you. You know, just, just putting That's it out there. You know, basically, you, I no, but you've all got your you've all got your opinions, and I totally respect them. So I don't want you know this this aggressive approach that that fake Eddie Hearn used. I don't want this to affect my likability because we know it's at an all time high right now. How are you? Very well, sir. How are you? I'm all right. Beautiful day here in oh, the amazing. HQ. What a time to be alive! I've got a quick question for you. Anything you want, Gage? Obviously. Why is the wane at five o'clock? We're trying something a bit different. Go on. Obviously, we've got three heavyweight fights. Um, so, this is something that happens, obviously, at UFC, which we copy 90% of the time. Um, and something I've seen top rank do as well, which is some of the fighters weigh in earlier in the day, and then they'll do more of a posed weigh in later on in the day. Okay? With the heavyweights, of course, they don't have to weigh in earlier in the day. We're putting this bang in the middle of the city, okay, right by B uh, Bishopsgate at 5 p.m. So we want to get a big crowd, just trying something different. Um, some of the fighters will weigh in earlier that day in front of the British Boxing Border Control and then re weigh in like a show weigh in later that day, particularly like Billum Smith and uh, React Paul, Akoli, um, Dan Aziz, Duffield, etc., etc. But the three heavyweight fights will weigh in at 5 pm in the city. And yeah, just something we're trying. Because top rank do this. I spoke to Bob Arab about it, mm. but it, it seems to be by doing this, you kind yeah, of lose we did it, something. Yeah, we did it for Lomachenko. Yeah, we, we did it for Lomachenko Crawler. The reason I like the live weigh ins is when you've got two guys that have been making weight, they're a bit aggy, to be honest with you. And you've got more chance of it being intense. So you can put out one of your moody clickbait, intense fighters. Diet, gouge each other's eyes out at the way in and they don't actually even touch each other but so we've never done that no, by the way okay but for the three main fights on this card which are obviously White, Revers, Chisora Spielke, Alan Price this is the way in this is the real way in they're not making way so I don't like the concept on a card with a lot of you know if it's lightweights middleweights people making way I like that to be raw I like the fans to see that live in this instance we're trying something different at 5 p.m. in the city, hoping for a great turnout. Come down, meet the guys. But for the three main fights, this is the first time they've been on the scales. They will be head to head for that final time. And it's going to be exciting. Okay, we're going to come on to the card in a minute. Mm -hmm. It's obviously been, a, I don't know how long it's been since we spoke. Um, well, I see Lethal Bizzle last night was. Uh, yeah, he, he was the one that made this interview, to be honest. Yeah, with you. Oh, shout, out, shout out to Lethal B. Yeah, you dench? 100%. You're dench, you're dench gang. Yeah. Um, what's going on? Why haven't you announced? No venue, no date? For, oh, we had two approaches last week, so. Joshua, by yeah, the way, Joshua, didn't yeah. get that. Everybody knows that the two main sites, New York, Cardiff. New York, November 29, Cardiff, December 14. We had a couple of approaches last week from two different countries to stage the event. They were very interesting, 
Um, financially, they were very impressive. But more than that, it was it was kind of groundbreaking. And I wanted to explore those further. I spoke to Anthony, the team. They want me to explore those further. There's meetings today. There's meetings tomorrow. And the problem I have is that I've got a very big mouth. So when I do an interview, I say, end of the week, we'll have it sorted. And actually the plan was the end of, not the weekend just gone, the weekend before was to announce and decide. But this is all the period where these approaches come on. These approaches, uh, there's a lot of work that has to be done around them, you know, especially in events that haven't staged major fights before, in, in, sorry, in cities or countries. So not only did we get another approach from a big city or area in America, we had another one in another country, which I won't go into, and that is the reason for the delay. No issues with Joshua, no issues with Ruiz, just that we haven't fully decided yet where that will be. For me, I think my gut feeling is still the same dates that we discussed, but I have to explore these opportunities and that's what I'm doing at the moment. Can you tell us what continent these countries are in? Well, uh, they're actually, there's, there's three. Do you know what continent the countries are in? <laughs> <laughs> no, so I'll say no, I can't say that, mate. Um, there has been one additional one from America and there has been two other countries. West Coast? Uh, yes, yes. Famous. Yeah. And again. And where's that one? Abroad. So, but again, I think, I try and just tell you the truth every time I see it. I, I don't, I, I, I still think those two dates will be the ones, because we've had approaches before for this kind of stuff, you know, like insane approaches to stage Joshua fights. But now, I mean, the mad thing is, is that, and don't get me wrong, he has to win the rematch. But in defeat, it's like his value has escalated rather than declined. Do you understand? Or not just value, the interest in Joshua. So this rematch turns out to be the it biggest fight. Maybe not for the right reasons. No, but of course, you never want to lose. Oh. I can't sit here and say, oh, it's worked out great, mate. No, we, we lost. Gee, we, we did suggest that at the time. I know, yeah, apparently it was just so we could do a big rematch. But we, we, the team, are devastated with the loss. But we've got the opportunity to put it right. And it turns out that if he does, he's twice as big as he was before the Ruiz fight. So it's mad how things can work out, but the pressure is on the fight to win. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the honest... But I don't know what else to tell you other than we've had a couple of late approaches which we are getting to the bottom of and as always you put time scales on me to make a decision. The weekend. The weekend. This right. weekend? Yeah. In I mean, the ring, yeah? After? No. No. There's, there's a few things happening and being announced this weekend, next week and you know. Is... We saw some... I watched the video with TMZ with... Uh, I think it was TMZ mm. with uh, Andy Ruiz, where he was, you know, making some comments. He was kind of signing some stuff, but answering questions at the same time. He's, he was talking about him being the A side. And can you just give us an indication whether is Andy Ruiz any kind of issue no. for the making of the no, show? unless he decides not to honour his contractual obligations, which would end horrifically. In but him being stripped of all belts? No, not really. It's just a huge legal mess. I mean, you wouldn't be able to fight. I mean. I want to go, Andy Ruiz is an honourable stand-up guy. He knows what he signed. And it wasn't unfair what he signed, but he has contractual obligations that he has to meet now for, through getting that opportunity. We'll be, you know, I've sat with you in interviews before. It wasn't that Andy Ruiz was all of a sudden fought his way to number one contender and he was a deserved mandatory. He, he was chosen from a group of people uh, because we believed he would be the best, most competitive fighter for Anthony Joshua. We were right. Um, and then, if he was to win that fight, as set out in the contract, which is confidential, there were a number of terms that he would have to adhere to. It's very standard. It's not, oh, that was out of order. Oh, he's the A-side now. Oh, you better look. I don't know. 
this is what was agreed between both parties, negotiated and agreed. It wasn't you sign this, otherwise it was negotiated. So Andy Ruiz, Tom Brown, Al Heyman, they are involved in this situation, all, all parties, and have agreed and signed to for a number of contractual obligations for the rematch. Nothing really to discuss. Do, Could he that... turn around and say, I'm not, yes, and there would be a huge legal case that would probably stop him from fighting that any uh, person who interfered with the contract would then be, I mean, it, it would be, and no one, all the conversations between Team Joshua and Team Marie, it's not, oh, we're not doing that, or it's, okay, we've exercised the, the, the clause for the rematch, you'll be given well in advance of enough time to prepare, you've been given the two dates anyway, so we're all, we're all good. Will Andy Ruiz want to come to the UK? Probably not. But Has he got an issue with coming to the UK? I don't think he wants to, but unfortunately, with his contractual obligations... Are you saying he has no choice? If it's in the UK, it's in the UK? Yeah, yeah he, know, he signed up to certain things. We decide where that rematch will take. Does he have any input on where the venue is? That's down to the promoters, which is us. Okay. So we're not... It's not a case of you know being disrespectful. It's just and and again, Andy Ruiz is a stand-up guy. He's an honourable guy. So is his father. They know what was agreed. It's not just all of a sudden this piece of paper's popped up and someone's like, oh no, oh I didn't know I signed this. This was all set out with lawyers and everything. So we don't it, we don't expect any problems. He would much rather fight in America. Of course he would. But. Joshua will be the one who ultimately decides where that fight takes. What is he saying at the moment? Out of two, oh, forget AJ. The other, yeah, forget the other AJ's two. AJ saying, "I don't really care where it is. You decide." Is one ahead of the other at the moment? At the kind of I think the training team, the 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 common sense of anyone would say, "Kai." But if you're Robin Kraken. He knows boxing, he knows where fighters perform best. You would have to say that Joshua has performed better. I mean, of what we know of the history, Joshua has performed better in London or Cardiff than he did at MSG that night. Was it the travelling? Was it the time zone? Was it the occasion? Was it bad prep? Was it mindset? I don't know. But the training team, any fighting person, everyone... That, you know, people give me all their advice, right? I don't ask for it, but a lot of people just do. It has to be in Cardiff. It has to be. Like, this is what boxing people are saying, right? There is a percentage of people who say, go back to MSG. Go back to MSG. And Joshua is of that mindset as well. He said that to me. Don't you think we should go? I said, mate, you are the one that calls this fire. I don't want to be the one who goes, let's go to MSG. More money. More prestige, back to the scene of the crime, etc. Whoever's ordered a taxi to Heathrow, he's waiting outside for you. <laughs> and, so, you. and so Josh is the one who's making the call on this. So once we have these other sites, and we go to contract on these sites, and we see what's real and what's not, that will be put in front of him, he will make the decision. He, he will make the decision. Clarify the dates for me again, so... November 29, December 14. That's basically all around 14 the 14 is in... Cardiff. Cardiff and yeah. 29. So but now these other dates... One where are they sitting? They'll all be around those dates. So they'll be the same weekend. December 7 could be an option, but that's your window of fights there. <coughs> so, so currently, at the moment, you were saying by the weekend, possibly. Yeah, again, I've said it five times. Now I get people on, you said... But I'm saying it because you're asking the question, when will you make the decision? At the time I give you an answer for something, that is the plan. This game changes like that every day. So right now, having working after here, going to a meeting to go through contracts of site, venues, etc., etc. right now, in my mind, we will make a decision this weekend. Are you 100% we'll... certain that the rematch will happen? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean... Look, if Andy Ruiz wants to retire or wants to, you know, yeah, bar, like, bar, yeah, yeah, I mean, but yeah, we're we're a hundred percent committed again. Um, yeah, I think I think it does. And I, listen, I think Ruiz fancies the job. Ruiz thinks he'll knock knock Joshua out in the rematch. He does. Why wouldn't he? And if he does, congratulations, you are 
arguably the biggest star in the sport, to do it free to do what you want. Okay. Um, I want to talk about Callum Smith. Mm. Um, when we hear that the offer was rejected, was that rejected by you or by Joe Gallagher? No, so Frank, Frank decides to send the offer to Joe Gallagher, his licence manager, not to me. So eventually it goes, to, well, at the first, the whole timing of this thing, the first interview he gave, I've sent an offer, he didn't. We haven't received it. Then eventually after I come out and said we haven't received anything, it came. Then we did another one a week after, I said still hasn't came. And then I saw his interview. Um, where it had came. But Joe was away, hadn't sat down with him. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but when you make an offer like that, which is basically the same money that I'd give Callum Smith to have a voluntary defence, it's not something that we're rushing around the table to discuss. Do you understand? So I don't know whether it was made because that's what he pays his fighters. I don't know if that was made just so he could say he made the offer to just to show Billy Joe he was actually trying to make big fights. But the offer was, I don't use bad words, but it was, just, it was just like average money. MSG money for Callum and Dan, one in Liverpool, that kind of money. If we're gonna do a pay-per-view fight, a unification fight for two Brits, you'd have to pay significantly more money than that. And if you're gonna, have an arrangement where the fighters are on 50-50 of a pot of money. The business school that I come from says, let's make that pot as big as fucking possible. Let's not limit the pot. Let's not not sell the tickets. Let's not put it on a platform that's not gonna deliver the maximum revenue for that fight. So again, not being arrogant, not being, if we were gonna do that fight, we'd wanna maximize the pot for the fighters. So the numbers they put forward were miles away in terms of the value that I perceive Callum Smith should have in that fight. Um, we sat down, and, and by the way, we have a plan for Callum Smith to box twice this year. This is a plan that stems back before MSG, before Billy Joe's name was even mentioned. The plan for him is to go in September in the UK and then December in the US. Are we open for the Billy Joe Saunders fight? Absolutely. So why don't you make them offer? I can do, but it's not, you know, you're in a situation where, like, one, you've got the split of the fight. I'm not gonna go into that now because people have got their opinions. I'm just telling you who's earning what and who's been earning what and who hasn't. I don't wanna start talking about splits because fans don't like talking about splits. It's boring. But will I go back to them with an offer for Billy Joe Saunders? Yes, I believe so. But at the moment, we got an offer, and, and again, not talking about any promoter particularly, but we have a responsibility to our fighters for them to enter into deals that are credible. And I'm just saying that there are a lot of things to consider when you're talking about a sizable amount of money to make sure that I do the correct job for my fighter. So, we are 100% open for the fight. I'm not sitting here saying, I'm not doing that on B2. No, 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 of course. If they would have made a proper offer, I would have had to, if it, this offer wasn't even, we looked at it and it was like, we almost laughed. Are you saying similar money to what Callum earned to fight Hassan and Dunn? Not far off, yeah, like there or thereabouts. And the same money that he would make for the next defense. Do you understand? And Billy Joe fights a big fight. Billy Joe is a brilliant fighter, brilliant fighter. That's a tough fight for Callum Smith. That's a tough fight for Canelo, Billy Joe. Tough fight for Golovkin. So, if I'm gonna put Callum Smith in that kind of fight, we gotta make sure, I mean, Billy's not my responsibility, but if I was representing Billy, I wouldn't be offering him that kind of money to, to fight Callum Smith. You know, Billy Joe's gone from WBO middleweight champion, WBO super middleweight champion, he is there or thereabouts for the mega fights, and you want to put him in the Callum Smith fight for that type of money. So, again, good fight. I think the fight will happen. But all I can tell you is that the offer, it was just like, and again, people have got credibility when making offers. Some people make offers and 
it's not even taken seriously. It's just to get a response in your videos. So, but you're saying that there's a like a good likely chance that you will at some yes, point. Yes. Yep. What as before Cap, you make Callum Smith the next move for his fight? No, I think Billy Joe will fight in September on September 21st or whatever their date is, yep. 14. And I think Callum Smith will box in September. I don't see those guys fighting each other in September. I'm not against it, but our plan when we sat down with Callum Smith was he had a kid in January. Let's box him three times this year and then dive into the, the mega fights next year. I'm not saying Billy Joe's not a mega fight, but what the fights I want for Callum Smith are Canelo Alvarez, Danny Jacobs, Gennady Golovkin, these kind of fights. Billy Joe is not quite as big as those fights, but it's still a unification fight. And Callum wants to capture the belts. So at some point, Callum will come to me and say, right, I want to gamble. I want to be in those big fights. And the Billy Joe fight is a is a tough fight, but a good fight, and it's a domestic fight. So I'm certainly up for making those fights. So your plan will be for Callum to fight in September and in December? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I want to get him, like I said, I want him to fight Canelo. That's the fight. And I want to get Anfield in the, the diary. I'm not expecting Canelo to go to Anfield, love him to. But I want Callum Smith to either fight Canelo or to fight in Anfield next May. And by the way, that could be Billy Joe. But I want him to box once in the UK, once in America, and then I want him to fight next May, either Canelo Alvarez or to fight Anfield. But the Billy Joe fight you're seeing as next year as opposed no, to... No, not necessarily. Listen, if they came in with a proper offer that was financially secure and was proper money, I, Callum would take that fight. But at the moment, is there enough money in that fight? And I'm not saying that Frank's offer... In, the, in terms of the, the size of the fight was horrific, it was poor, but the fight's not as big as it could be. You don't want to hear that, fans don't want to hear that. But there is some work to be done to make that the fight that it could be and should be. Does that make sense? Hmm. Like, if you put that at Anfield, would it, see, see, it's not really, Callum Smith went into the series, the series was brilliant for Callum on so many levels. From a profile perspective, it didn't help him. And I look at Billy Joe and I think, Billy Joe should be such a big draw compared to what he is. Now, he just boxed in his hometown. They sold like 2,000 tickets. But he's an number, like, I can't give the guy enough credit. He's a, he's a brilliant fighter. He's hilarious. Don't agree with everything he does. And sometimes he's a nightmare. But that's Billy and he's going to do what the fuck he wants. But... You know, to get these big fights, to get the Canelos, to get the Golovkins, you've got to have that profile that fans are actually calling that on. You know, and I feel like both of them have so much more to give in terms of the not just profile, but just the awareness of both fighters, both incredible fighters. But you don't want to hear that; you just want it now. But it's not my job to to not try and drive the size of these fights or the profile of these fighters. Okay, uh, moving on. This Dylan White situation with with the WBC. Mm. So you must have put out some comments yesterday. I didn't. I think it was just an interview where they said what's likely to be for the uh, Dylan White re rebass fight, and I said what's likely to be is WBC interim world title for the mandatory position. Last night, again, like all these things, I can only tell you my time and analysis of the situation when we do our interviews. And last night, up until one o'clock in the morning, we are drafting paperwork with the WBC still to try and tighten this agreement up to make sure that it's fair for Dillian White. So, so the only thing missing by the sounds of it is you want Dylan White to fight the winner of all season Wilder. No. So, there will be a set date where the WBC world champion has to fight Dillian White. If he beats Rebus, by the way, right? So that would allow, ultimately, the Ortiz fight and the Fury Wilder fight. And by that date, which is in May, end of May, the winner will have to fight Dillian White. You're happy with that? At the end of the day, not really, but 
Dillian White is going to fight again this year. So what's the worst case scenario? Dillian White will fight the winner of Wilder Fury by the end of May 2020. I know it sounds like a long time, but Wilder's fighting Ortiz. There's nothing we can do about that. So Dillian's going to fight in November, December, if he beats Rivas. So the timing's not the end of the world. Do you understand? Fury Wilder's a massive fight. Dillian will be there. The, we know the split for the interim world champion against the WBC world champion. I'm not going to go into it. Look at the WBC rules. It's fantastic. So actually, whilst we're not over the moon with the resolution, we see it as fair. We see that he's had his mandatory against Brazil. He's had two more fights. And then he fights the mandatory. It'll be about 900 days, by the way. Yeah, but it's okay. Because Gillian White will be involved in an absolute monstrous fight against the winner of Wilder Fury. But again... We don't want, this is when I talk about the paperwork, we don't want a franchise champion. Yeah, but what happens if No, this, this, is, this is the kind of right, thing okay. that when I talk about tightening things up, the winner of Wilder Fury, providing Wilder beats Ortiz, providing um, Josh, uh, White beats Rivas, okay? The winner of that fight must fight Dillian White. That's what we want. Nothing else. Don't want a free title. Don't want to... Franchise champion, the winner of that fight. Don't matter, don't matter what they are. So clarity about the franchise situation is all in this resolution. Very important. Okay. Because Dillian White, in my opinion, has lost the opportunity over that period to fight Deontay Wilder. That is the fight that he wants. Okay. Now Fury beats him. Fury White, no problem. I mean, we're all we're all in for that fight as well. But in terms of the date, in an ideal situation, we wanted. The winner of White Rebass fights Wilder next. No Ortiz fight. But we've been negotiating. We've been more than fair. We understand what the WBC want. We understand they're under pressure from the PBC. They'll be under pressure from top rank. So just be fair. We've been more than fair now. We're saying have two fights. Because Dillian's going to fight in November, December anyway. Will they let you know this before Saturday? Yes, absolutely. Like today. Okay. We're, we're nearly there. I mean, we're nearly at the position where, you know, and once this is done, no more bad mouthing. You know, and I'd, I'd like to think we haven't bad mouthed WBC. I don't, do you think we have? No, really? I think Dylan White's held it with. So do I, but yeah. it's been difficult. There's a lot we want yeah. to say. But we respect the WBC, we respect Maurizio Suleiman. And whilst we don't agree with everything they do, we're not here to downplay governing bodies and, and so forth. But we have to be respected ourselves. Our fighters' rights have to be respected. Dillian White has to be respected. And we feel, are we 100% happy with this resolution? No. Will we live with it? Yes. But we need to be in a position, certainly before I don't know, the press conference, to say, here is the resolution. It's a joint announcement from the WBC and Matchroom. This is how it works. And it makes the Rebass fight so important. I mean, it's important anyway. But we're in a position here where if Dillian White beats Rebass, he gets the Wilder Fury winner. But you still box him in December. Yes, yes, yes. He's not going to wait till May. No, of course not. Yeah. Okay. Not ideal, but you'll take it, basically. Yes. I mean, not ideal because life isn't ideal. But if it wasn't Fury Wilder, we would have pushed harder. But the fight becomes so much bigger by just waiting those extra couple of months that I don't have an issue with. Have you got date clarity for Fury Wildro within this resolution? No, only other than what? So if that got pushed? No, it has to, the, there's a, the stop date is the May date okay. for White to fight for the world title. Okay. All right, well hopefully old Mauricio sends you an email now while you're on the, you never know. Oh yeah, no, yes. No, he's FaceTiming me. Maurizio! Hola, que tal? Oh, muy bien, gracias. No, well, um, Let's talk about a card. Mm -hmm. um, Mate, it's unbelievable. It really is unbelievable. Hey, uh, talk to me about tickets. 
Um, yeah, so let me tell you this whole thing, because everybody likes to say, no, we sold a ticket for a show. We sold 12,000 tickets. I heard that today, yes. What, we sold 12,000? Yes. Who from? I heard that today, not from someone here, but someone Okay, well, we have. Yeah. I wanted, to, by the way, we're not going to sell out, which I'm a bit disappointed in, because I thought this this card would sell out. So you're four, four and a half thousand Six to, Yeah, we will sell another thousand, fifteen hundred tickets. Some people know that from I now. was sixteen and a half. Yes. Sixteen, eight. Yes. Yeah. general sale, plus you've got boxes and stuff like that, right? So, we um, we will sell another, where are we, Tuesday, 1,500 tickets from now to show. We'll have somewhere between 12 and a half and 14,000 people in the O2. These are fucking lot of people, right? What happened was, when I was negotiating the Lomachenko fight with um, Aaron, I said, he said, when do you want to announce? I said, I don't really want to announce before uh, the white card because we're still selling tickets. He goes, all right then. Next thing, he's done an interview going, yeah, well, I've heard the white fight struggling to sell tickets. He's thrown his toys out, Brown, because Dillian White didn't sign with him. So he's, he's a dog, Aaron. I can't believe it, but that's his style, right? So at no point, by the way, do you think, if I was struggling for tickets for, for white rebates, do you think I would tell Bob Aaron? Do you know what I mean? Bob, how's it going, mate? You know, Oh, I'm up the creek with these tickets for white rebass. No, I just said, I don't want to announce another O2 fight before an O2 fight. Does that not make common sense? So that's why we didn't announce, or we haven't announced, yeah. Is Lomachenko Campbell happening? Yeah. Still got a little bit of paperwork to go through, but there will be an announcement this week, and someone more special will be very in town this week. Actually, a few special people will be in town this week. You're going to love. Oh, um, so that's where it came from. Someone's, someone's like, you've only sold two and a half thousand tickets, mate. No, we've sold 12,000 tickets. Sold? Yes. yes. Sold? Yes. And you will see on Saturday, we'll have half of the upper tier open. We'll have the little bit, the horseshoe won't be, unless we all of a sudden sell 4,000 tickets between now. And we will have somewhere between 12, and a half thousand and twelve and a half and thirteen and a half thousand in there. It's a great effort. It's a great effort. I did think it would sell out because I think it's an unbelievable card. I think one of the problems we have is not enough people know about Oscar Rivas. And he isn't talking English. Yes, and I think that's probably cost us a couple of thousand tickets. Um, but it's difficult. I mean, again, not like everyone thinks like, like look at last Saturday at the O2. It was a terrible crowd and a really good show. Really good show that they put on. Not knocking it. Has that had an effect? Because I asked Frank about that and he's he sort of said they would have done what they'd done anyway, but they must have had an effect. Well, I, the Two back to back on shows. I didn't, all I saw was the seats on the crowd, like in the lower tier on Saturday. I, don't, I wasn't there. I'm being told somewhere between three and three and a half thousand sold for last Saturday at the O2. That card deserves at least the, the lower tier sold out. But we announced our show, and then they announced. So they've gone up against a card that's already sold what we've sold, and how do they expect those, when they announced it, I don't know, seven, eight, nine thousand, or those now 12,000 people, to now buy a ticket for the week before as well? So it was suicide really doing it, but it's difficult to get these dates for the venues. What do, you so, think, what do you think about the pricing of your tickets for this fight? Um, I think they're quite expensive, but I think it's a monster card. You know, they're, they're somewhere, they're not Joshua prices, and they're not too different to hay value prices. In fact, they're cheaper than hay value prices in, in, in the majority of areas. But this is a much bigger card. This is a much bigger night. So... I'm not saying it's super expensive, it is quite expensive. And, you know, with the Lomachenko Campbell card that will be announced soon, the ticket prices, they, they, they won't be too dissimilar. They'll probably be a little bit less in certain areas. But this is a big heavyweight night of boxing. Big night. And this is going to be proper value. So, what is it for the lower tier? 100 quid to sit in the lower tier, 40s and 60s up to, I mean, it's, you know. But I think the main, the main issue is it's Rivas. So, I mean, you talk about, obviously, that was a good card from, from 
beating it on the weekend. Really? Like, suppose, yeah. Your one's paid for you and this, that one wasn't, mm -hmm. though. It's nothing to do with crap tickets. No, no, I know. I'm just... Mm. The majority no. of people are not at the venues, either or they're at home watching. Yeah, we're talking about tickets, actually. Okay. Well, I mean, sure. I think I think that the card, the, the difference is, is when you look at the likes of Dubois, Gorman, Joyce, no one really knows who they are yet. And that's a, a product of the, the job promotionally and just the job that they're starting out in their careers. White is a big, big name for British boxing now. So is Chisora. Even Allen against Price. So ours is a much, much bigger card. But I do think if they would have separated the distance, they would have sold a lot better. Okay, so that's tickets on that. But the card in general, what, what's happened with Coley? So a Coley is, a Coley is a nightmare trying to get opponents for. What happened with Sam Hyde? Sam Hyde didn't want to take the fight. They didn't feel like the money was enough. Half of them, actually more money than Jack Massey. Um, Joe Gallagher's on holiday, Sam had a holiday booked, it just didn't work out. So, akoli has got an international opponent being announced today, um, and then he's gonna fight for the European title. Which is a really, really, really tough fight. First bids are next week. So, just get this, I'm looking forward to seeing him with Shane McGuigan. But when you look at the car, I mean, White Rivas, it's just a brilliant fight. Brilliant fight, and everybody in boxing is saying the same thing. Massive danger fight for Dillian White. Rebass is a handful, he's relentless, he's super fit. Just knocked out Bryant Jennings. I mean, it's a tough, tough fight. Allen against Price is just, it fascinates me. I mean, Dave Allen, when you talk about overlooking opponents, Dave Allen is overlooking David Price by so far, they're asking me to make the Povetkin fight now. Right? So, and Dave Price, looks so focused for this fight. And, but I just don't know what's gonna happen. You know, is Price just gonna chin him early? Is he gonna be in control and then gas after five or six rounds? Is the White Rhino just gonna chin him early? Like, it's just, a, it's a thrilling all British fight. And I think Chisora Spilka has gone well under the radar. I think this is a great fight. Chisora, not historically the best against Southpaws, but he's fighting for his career, as is Spilka. And these are two quality heavyweights that are going to have a complete terror. And by the way, I think the fight of the night for me, which the wider public won't really know anything about, is React Poor against Billum Smith. I think it's an absolute war, and I think you're going to see a sensational KO in that fight. Um, Akoli, Dalton Smith, Fabio Wardley's just been added to the card. Even Duffield against Aziz is a really good little tear up. It is a brilliant, brilliant card on Saturday night. Brilliant card. And well worth the money. Whether you're coming to the arena or whether you're watching on Sky Sports box office, well worth the money. And I know we joke about your little pitch at the start, but same rules apply. Same rules apply. R5 or Ooh. five o'clock on Facebook through to midnight. It's there, you know the so price. What's on Facebook? Um, Fabio Wardley, Babich, who's Dillian White's oh, new yeah. heavyweight. Savage, so, yeah. Babich. so he just debuted for us in Rome. Yeah. And he fights again. How did he look? Good. He's a, he's a handful. Mm. He's going to be in a lot of exciting fights. Very raw. So you've got Babich and Wardley, the two heavyweight fights on Facebook. Then you've got Duffield against Aziz, Akoli, Dalton Smith, um, Rapport against Billum Smith, Chisora against Filker, Allen against Price, White against Rebus. Oh, got a tingle. This is a brilliant card. Brilliant card. How many guys do you expect to do? Well, for all those people, he's going like that. I think more. I mean, when you look at Parker, White, Chisora, White, you can stick another finger up for those ones. Right. So, I think Dillian's profile is great. I think with Alan Price, I think with Chisora, yeah, I expect around 400,000 bucks. Okay, that'd be solid. Mm. D Dillian White is just solid full stop. Like all his pay-per-view buys, all his ticket sales, they've all been consistently solid. So he's a solid performer. He's just got to perform in the ring. I think this is a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous fight. It's mad, isn't it, how this is your first UK pay-per-view this year? See? What do you mean, see? see? What do you mean, see? 
That you could look at that two ways. We've turned down a lot of pay-per-views this year. You've turned down one? No, two. What was the other one? Eubank again, yeah, Big Yeah, that's what I meant. And another one as well, which I can't say because it involved a bit of an interesting dynamic. Okay. But... Um, what are your thoughts on Anthony Arden Covenant being announced? Um, I think there's loads. I mean, I, I don't know whether the cop, whether that. I still think Kovalev Canelo may rear its head um, for September. But I think why did you say that? Just because there's a lot going on, and but I think it's a calculated, a good calculated move from Team Yard. That is what I think. Um, they're getting, I know the deal, they're getting great money, great money, so are Queensbury, um, to make that fire. So, and it's the kind of money where you can't really not take that fire. And they think they can win. And Kovalev, we know he's a class operator, but what does he have left? Well, what I like about Yard is, he's, he's fearless, whether it's, and Tunde, whether it's delusion, or whether it's fearless, it's one of the two. And same terms apply for both. They don't give a fuck. They think they, as far as Tunde is concerned, Anthony Yard is the next coming of Sugar Ray Leonard. So they genuinely believe they can beat Kovalev. Good luck to them. I think it's great. I think Tunde, I think Tunde is great. I think he's hilarious. I mean, I think he's, he has to be on a wind up. But whatever he is or isn't, I think he's gold. And I say good luck to him. British fight again. He's got, he's got a big shout in this fight. Yeah, I mean, look at the odds. I looked at the odds the other day. I mean, he's only like a two and a half to one, three to one underdog in the fight. We don't know how good Anthony Yard is. Anthony Yard might be really good. He might go and knock Kovalev out. My worry is that he's come from nowhere. And sometimes a fighter that comes from nowhere... Doesn't like, you know? You know, do you understand? With the with the history, generally aren't the ones that go on and fight at the top level. But I wish Anthony had the best of luck. I think great. I'll, I'll be supporting him hundred percent. I hope he goes and knocks Cobbler out. Okay. What involvement did you have in like the Canelo side of things on this? Did you have any involvement? Uh, like the talks of Canelo and Cobbler. Yeah. Yeah. What, what did I mean, that have to do with you? Because on paper it has nothing to do with you, really, does it? No, but you're referring to what are you referring to? Reports. Yes. Yeah. Reports. I was asked to help. Let's just say that. With the making of Canelo and Kovalev. Yes. Why were you asked to help? Um, because I'm a fucking genius. <laughs> no, but I'm, no, I'm being serious. No, no, no what, because the liaison between like Dover and yeah and. Um, a few people reached out to me and said, can you help make this happen? I, I was sitting at home and the phone went and they said, Eddie, um, if ever there's a problem in boxing, we know you're the guy. <laughs> Go on, carry on, sorry. Well, you know he was being serious. Go on, you're, you're no, the guy. No, no. So, you're the guy. Um, the exact words were, you walk in, you sprinkle your magic, you make things happen. Um, charming, handsome, intelligent, can you help? So I said, uh, I'm busy, I'm busy. No, I didn't, I said, yeah, of course. So, yeah, I was just like, involved. So when you say Canelo, and I, Canelo. I normally I say I'm involved and people say, I didn't even say I was involved in this situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This came out in the media, because I didn't want to go, yeah, and everyone goes, why is he always interfering? I was asked to, to try and make that fight. So when you said at the start of this uh, bit about mm. Canelo may rear its head again, mm. th that must suggest that you know something. I'm not, at this stage, all I know is that Canelo really wanted to fight Kovalev. Kovalev really wanted to fight uh, Canelo, right? And there will always be a deal where someone would be happy to put something on ice. Do you know what I'm saying? So, if Yard Kovalev could wait till the end of the year, 
would everybody be happy? There are so many things that have to get taken care of for that to happen. Yeah, but prior to the announcement, we understood this, but now the fight's... I don't know, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just, all I'm saying is it wouldn't surprise me. And it would, it would take everyone, no one would get shafted in that scenario. Do you understand? Everyone would have to be in agreement. But Kovalev Canelo is a really big fight that I know that everybody wants to see. So it would it would mean that Anthony Yard would have to say, okay, give me like I mean he's gonna get royally looked after. But at the same time, Anthony Yard, like again, I know the deal, he's on a lot of money. A lot of money. So and now's a great time because you know when you've got a fighter like Kovalev, do you think Kovalev wants to fight Anthony Yard? Not that he's worried about him. He don't even know who he is. What's in it for him? Nothing. So what does Kovalev want, is it? Mm. He wants to fight Canelo. No, I can see that. Right? Can so see when that. that breaks down and you're told you've got to fight Anthony Yard instead, great time to fight Kovalev. Mm. You know what I mean? Mojo's not the best. Yard's going to turn up. Tunde's going to drive them mad. Oh, mate. T Tunde's going to turn up in Russia and they're going to be going, who the fuck is this geezer? Like, his reputation already, you know, like in the, I'm talking about the conversation we were having, like, oh God, this guy is just, who is this guy? So Tunde, my advice to Tunde, Tunde, if you're watching, keep it up, mate. You've got to go to Russia, you've got to proper ruffle some feathers because you're going to drive them mental. And I don't know whether it's going to do their head in or they're just going to laugh, but I think you've got, you've got to get into it almost like Grove's Frotch style. Remember? Where he turned up. Carl Fox didn't want to fight George Graves. Do you know what I mean? He was mandatory at the time. And he was like, why am I fighting George Graves? Next thing, we're at the presser. Graves is going, yeah, yeah, I'm going to knock you out. And he's going, what the fuck? But in the end, so that's what Yard's got to do and Tunde's got to do with Kovalev. They've got to turn up to the presser and Tunde's got to be just in the ear and they've got, he's got, he's got to just make them feel like, who, this guy, who are these people? and try and get into their head. Bit of fury on Klitschko style. Yeah, same thing. Mm. Same thing. Tundi, rock up in the back. <laughs> no, no, but it's, it's part of the mental warfare, isn't it? Mm. Of, of winning fights. Um, Edward, what can you tell us about, actually before I ask this question, did you watch the boxing from Friday night on Channel 5? And looking back on it now, do you regret not being involved or? Well, I'm asking, I'm asking, what did you make of it? No, I dodged a bullet. I mean, look, Amir Khan, you have to give unbelievable props to, yeah, right? Yeah. Because Amir Khan, well, one thing I like about Amir Khan is he don't give a fuck what you think. He don't give a fuck what anyone thinks. He is about his business. He is about making his money and moving on, right? So when he started this thing in Saudi, and look, you know, a lot of people have been talking about events in Saudi and Dubai and, and they didn't happen. I know this was a smaller event with smaller money, but still, he's gone out there, he's made it happen. I mean, he was a bit unlucky that the, the kid from, um, the other kid was in a car crash, so he had to fight Billy Dib. I mean, that was, how he even got away with that, I don't even know, but he got away with it, he won, he got paid, he moves on. In terms of an event, I thought the event looked great. The card, was atrocious. But who cares? Amir Khan went there, he set a trend, he got his money, he won the fight, he moves on. So, well done to Amir Khan. Does Amir Khan fight Manny Pacquiao or Cal Brook next? I think his preference is to fight Manny Pacquiao in Saudi. Can that happen? I mean, I believe, by the way, as far as I'm concerned, Manny Pacquiao beats Keith Furman quite comfortably this Saturday. Right? Okay. And then I think he fights the winner of Errol Spence against uh, Sean Paul. That would make sense. Um, but if there's a potload of money from Saudi, I just think that fight, Khan Pacquiao is not quite, you know, the Saudi fight of the you know, two guys not quite in their prime anymore, you know. For me, We've made new offers for Brook against Khan. Obviously, we have a new head of... What, since Friday? No, not since Friday, but not long ago. Okay. And we'll be looking to sit down with Amir Khan next week and talk to him about... Did that happen this year, then? Is that possible? I think it has to. I think, yeah. again, like how many times have we said it has to happen this year? Yeah, like... The fight is still a very good fight. It's not the size that it once was, but it's still a monster domestic fight. 
and yeah, we would be looking to stage that fight this year. Okay. Um, so, but what is the situation with Kell Brook if he doesn't fight? And he he wants a big him? fight, you know. So what's I mean, he, I mean, he wants Crawford. I mean, I, it, there's no guarantee. I say there's no guarantee that Kell will fight again. He will fight again. But what I'm saying is, if for some reason no big fight came up, um, I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't fight again because that's what he wants. He wants the big fight. Oh, I'll turn that off one sec. Um, just want to touch on next weekend. Dallas. The yes. Fight you yes. On. No, I'm <laughs> thinking. I'm thinking August. Yeah. Um, for me, fight of the year so far. Hooker Ramirez, I think he's such a good fight. WBC, WBO unification, and they're the fights. Like, no rematch calls, no fight to our 140-pound world champion against top-ranked 140-pound world champion. Balls on the line, adrenaline, heart beating out of the chest, diving into the ring. I believe Maurice Hooker's going to knock Jose Ramirez out. I really do. Are you coming? Big shout. And he's coming. Is he? Oh, good. And his first American mm. trip. So It's going to be great. It's hot there. down there. Great card as well. Tevin Farmer defending his world title. Gassiev against the Weka. Big heavyweight fight. Mm. Gassiev's heavyweight debut. Massive mm. banana. Like the the Jeco, the Weka. The Weka, yeah. Knocked out Joshua five times in sparring. Um, and that's a, that's a slippery fight for Gassiev. You lose up on the card, Amo Williams, Nikita Barbie, good card, Tremaine Williams, good card, really good card. Farmer's been DMing me a, a bit lately. Same one. Just hoping, wishing me well. Yeah, it's nice. So really I nice guy. you're all right. And Tevin Farmer. Tevin Farmer, I have a lot of respect for on many levels. One. Tough fight, Fremois. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Fremois had a great fight with John O'Carroll. Mm. A lot of people thought Fremois nicked that fight. I had it a draw. It was a draw, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I was right again. Um, it, I expect Evan Farmer to look sensational in that fight. And knock for him more out. Um, and then I want Jojo Diaz for him. And then I want Tank Davis. Very optimistic there. Well, who else are you going to fight? I know, but the Tank Davis thing's like... I think you're going to see a change in... Um, I think the landscape of boxing is starting to change a little bit. I think we saw a crazy six months of people spending mad money. Now I think people are going to start to feel the pain. And oh, you mean in the pocket? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, and I think people are going to tighten up. And I think now it's the time. Does that mean that you for us not to tighten? Tight no, I think it's time for us not to tighten up. Right. People have people since our launch in October. People have been trying to compete, overspend, overpay. It's been hard. And I said at the start, it's a war of attrition. How deep are your pockets? So for us, when people now start tightening up, we've got to keep spending. We've got to keep giving these fighters what they need and what they want, and in many cases, what, what they deserve. Hey, you made a, announced a couple of new signings this week in um, Keon Conway mm -hmm. and also Martin Bacoli. Yes. Mm. Uh, who's obviously, his only defeat has been to another one of your fighters mm. now, Michael Hunter. Mm. Uh, yeah, talking about Bacoli first. Well, just on signings in general, we don't, I can't really take on any new fighters, but it's so tempting to take on fighters because I love the sport and I, certain people impress me and excite me. So when you look at Kieran Conway, that was a guy who we had on some of our Birmingham shows early in the day at 2 and 0, 3 and 0. Really good support from Northampton, obviously, not many fighters from that area. And I just really rated him, and he sort of went and did his own thing for a bit. MTK done a good job with him, keeping him active. He went into that tournament, the fight fighter ultimate thing, um, you know, the prize fighter, and lost Absolutely. in a three round decision, yeah. which can happen in those, those events. Came out and offered him the Cheeseman fight. And we knew, Tony Sims knew, who'd sparred with Conway, with Cheeseman, this was going to be a really tough fight. He really, really impressed me, Kieran Conway. He took that fight, although he was fit, he took it at three weeks' notice. He came down, he made the weight at 154. He boxed beautifully in that fight. I had Cheeseman winning the fight, but a really good performance from Conway. And again, across social media, get this guy on board, give him a chance, he's this, he's that, and that's what we did. So we spoke to MTK, 
We made them an offer. They thought it was a good opportunity for Kieran. And I'm excited. He's young, he's talented, he looks the part. Um, he has a great little catchment area there from, the, from Northampton that I think can get behind him. And we're in a division, he's in a division where we're very active. You know, with Cheeseman, with Fitzgerald, with Fowler, with all these guys. And, and not just those guys, but other guys above those in Liam Smith and Kel Brook and other guys around those in JJ Metcalf and Brian Rose. And I just, I just like the idea of getting these guys in the mix. Anthony Fowler against Kieran Conway, great fight. But who's going to win out Fowler against Rose? We'll come on to that in a second. Martin Bacoli. Martin Bacoli is a guy who I've watched um, spar hundreds of rounds with Anthony Joshua. That's a, bit of a, that's a promoter's exaggeration. Many rounds with Anthony Joshua. Good fire. Tough fire. And you know, some of these guys, did you see, um, you know Makabu, mm. which is his brother, mm. Alunga Makabu, mm. who obviously Bellew boxed with the WBC world title. Bell, you knocked him out, right? Ah, oh, Makabu is useless, that geezer, Alunga Makabu. But at the time, I can't tell you, no one wanted to fight Alunga Makabu. Bell, you actually had no choice but to fight Alunga Makabu for the WBC World Title. Knocked him out. Ah, oh, uh, he's rubbish. Do you see him the other night, Alunga Makabu? No. Okay, so he boxed Kudrashayev. You know, the Russian yes. dude with a beard, yeah. the absolute monster. Alunga Makabu knocked him spark out. Right, in Russia. They're serious fighters, these boys. They punch like fuck. When he went into the Michael Hunter fight, physically he weren't 100%, but I expected him to win that fight. We didn't know at the time how good Hunter was, and you're seeing that now. I just feel like with Bacoli that he's a dark horse of, of the heavyweight division. He's not afraid to fight anyone. He just went to Poland and stopped Marius Wack in Poland. Came back, he'll have a run out on August the 2nd, and then he'll be diving in all those fights. I would love to see Joe Joyce against uh, Martin Bacoli. I would love to see Dubois against Martin Bacoli. And they're great tests for the... And I'm not saying that Bacoli 100% wins all those fights, but they're proper fights and they're proper tests for those youngsters coming through. Mm. So he's good to go. Run him out on August the 2nd, let him knock someone out, and then all those fights. You know, you look at the fighters that we're involved with and we promote in the heavyweight division. Anthony Joshua, Dillian White, Usyk, Hergovic, Hunter, Gassiev, Chisora, Takan, Povetkin, Dave Allen, Dave Price. I've definitely missed some out, but I mean, we've got Joseph Parker. Sorry. I mean, it's an incredible lineup of heavyweights. So we've got to make sure they all fight each other because there's some brilliant fights to be made there. Did you actually watch the boxing from the weekend, like live? So I was in Italy because I stayed out there for the weekend. I tried to watch some of it live, uh, caught up with most of it the next day. I watched the Dubois fight, I didn't really watch, but I saw the next day all of the important highlights from that fight. And I saw some of the Joe Joyce fight, quite a few rounds, especially the early rounds of that fight. Mm. Okay, well, what did you make of it? Um, I think Joe Joyce gets unfair stick to be honest with you I think that um, if you don't know about Joe Joyce by now then you ain't been watching do you understand and what I mean by that is he's not particularly exciting he doesn't have bundles of charisma and isn't the most entertaining guy in the world but he, he's a nightmare right and <laughs> people, people say the same things after, oh my God, he's so boring, he's so slow. Haven't you watched all his fights? But he's fighting Brian Jennings in his 10th fight, right? So you have to give him credit for moving at that pace. But we all know about Joe. Joe has been a brilliant amateur. Sparred rounds and rounds with AJ. Like He's a proper heavyweight contender. And he's going in with Brian Jennings. So you should think it was Dylan White not too long who? ago. Brian Jennings. Yeah, yeah, but no, but he had a good fight with Rivas. Rivas knocked him out. Joe couldn't really hurt him. But you have to give Joe the credit. Sorry, just pick this back up. Yeah, Joe so knows. I think you've got, to give, you've got to give Joyce the credit. You know, he beat Brian Jennings. Um, wasn't, I mean, the only thing, the only time in the fight where 
it looked like he might not win was in the first round when he got a, a body shot. But other than that, you know, I think Adam Booth's going to improve him. Again, don't, don't expect Joyce to be like massively entertaining or like a, a big personality and like controversial. He's a really good British heavyweight that I believe can compete at a world level. If he fights like that, if he gets hit like that against a big, hard punching heavyweight, it's over. But give him give him the credit at least that he's fighting, you know, like, and he's up for fighting proper fights. So he's not perfect. Well, you know, he gets it. Yeah, and he's 35, 34. I think it's over, I think 34, maybe. Yeah, so he's got to move at, at speed, but I like Joe, I think he's a very nice man. And I think he's a genuine guy, and I think he's extremely tough. Um, I just, I just don't think that he's sort of captured the imagination of the public, and therefore people give him a hard time. They almost moan before the first bell's even gone. You get that sometimes, you know. Coley, a Coley, same kind of thing. Oh, he had a, he had a, one stinking fight. Oh, Coley, and people say, that. oh, Joe Joyce, he's slow. But these guys, they're just starting out. They're, then they're fighting at a top level. So, good luck to him. Were you impressed with Dubois? Yes, yeah, I think Dubois is a quality heavyweight, I do. I mean, I don't, and again, I feel sorry for Gorman because he's been slung in that fight where he's not, he's not ready for that fight, he's not ready for those levels. He's boxed Kevin Johnson and he's boxed, who's the other guy? Gorman didn't fight Johnson, did he? Yeah. Oh, I fought. Did they both fight him? Yeah, and they, they, he fought the other kid um, who fought James yeah, Parker. No. Um, oh, oh, what's his name? Kajanu. Uh, yeah, Kajanu. So, but he's never boxed anyone that's come to win, is what I'm saying. So, Gorman weren't ready for Dubois, but it was a good fight, made sense. Bald approved that fight for the title, even though Joyce against Dubois was ordered. Dubois is a very good fighter. Punches very hard. Again, gets hit too much, but that's okay. But I just feel like no one knows who he is. Like Dubois should really be. Dubois should almost be following in the footsteps in terms of the like Joshua should be boxing all around the country. Should be filling up stadiums around the country. Can't fill up the stadium. You know they've got. When you're promoting a fighter, don't try and make someone something they're not. Right? Again, he's never going to be this amazing talker, this big personality. Don't, like, he's got a Twitter account that he doesn't operate or touch. He even admitted that to you, right? Not to me, he hasn't. In your interview? No. Or, or an IFL interview. Okay. Sorry, last week. Or Boxing Social, the other big one. Um, and, like, so, you just let the kid be raw, let him be natural rather than make him be something he's not. But Daniel Dubois is an excellent talent. Really good fighter. To be fair, you can't really say Joshua was selling out arenas after 11 fights. Yeah, he, he was doing six, five, six thousand in every town where he was going. In Newcastle, in Birmingham. They boxed an undercard in Glasgow. In Wales when he boxed there, yes. He was doing thousands and thousands of tickets. Okay. In every city. I thought the first time he kind of sold out was when he fought Dylan White. Oh, he sold out. Yeah, that was sold out at the O2 that night. But mm. even when he bought Cornish at the O2, he did 10,000, something like that. On his debut, he done 6,000 against Emmanuel Elia. I know he won Olympic gold, but you've got the... I don't think Emmanuel Elia has ever fought since then. No, I think he's still in the O2, to be fair. But what I'm saying is, and I know this is really boring, to get a fighter to... to huge levels, the build starts from the debut. It doesn't start 10, 11 fights in, do you understand? And this isn't a criticism of Dubois, I'm just saying, that build starts from the debut. You can't get to a level, and this is where I feel people like Billy Joe and people like that, they weren't built on the way through. Other fighters were, Brampton, uh, Warrington, so when you become a world champion, you have that value, you have that commercial pull. And 
If you don't build them on the way up, when they get to that levels, you'll either be paying them money they're not generating, or you'll be paying them money they're not happy with. And that is my words of wisdom. Edward, you announced- Have you seen this? What? Someone said, have you seen the gif of my old man when he goes, shut the fuck no, up, mate? No, I haven't. Right, I've got to show you this, this is so funny. Watch this. Watch it. It's not that big, so. He's like, what's that? I said, no, we just put it together in the office. You want it to oh. go viral. No. Um, Eddie, sorry, mm. you announced your uh, 2nd of August yes. card. Yes, yes. Next gen. Mm. What's the venue? We're at the Echo Arena, or Old Echo Arena, Exhibition Centre. So it's part of the arena. Holds like two and a half thousand. Um, the rescheduled July 6th show without Coley. So Rose against... Um, uh, Fowler, Lewis Ritson against Joe Hughes, which is a great fight. Robbie Davis Jr. If Lewis Ritson beats Joe Hughes, we will be making Lewis Ritson against Robbie Davis Jr. When? Um, when or where? When and where? October, probably in Newcastle. Okay. Like okay. Uh, Martin Bacoli. You've got uh, John Harding Jr. Mm. in a great fight for the English title against Jack Cullen. Really good fight. Uh, you've got Martin Bacoli on the card, I think I said that. You've got uh, someone else as well. Um, really good fight. Thomas Asomba against Sean McGoldrick, his first big step up. It's a really good card. Good really good card. Um, August 2nd. And then, what have we got? So we've got July 20 at the O2, July 27 in Dallas, August 2nd in Liverpool. And then we're off until August the 24th in Mexico, which Strada. is Estrada. Um, also on that card is Hergovic as well, Pacheco, Espino, and um, another fight which we're hopefully announcing today. Could be a world title fight on that card. And then August 31st, which providing all being well with the contract. Are you going all out with the other card? Yes. Yes. There will be no heavyweights on that card though, is there? Might be. Yes, there might be. Yes, there fucking might be, Giza. Could he come from down under? No. Oh, Joe's a Oh, New Zealand, no. No. Sorry, no. Joe. I mean, no. New Zealand. No. But there is a heavyweight fight I'm playing for that card. What, a good... Couple of world title fights. Good domestic fight. Yeah. And then what are you doing in September? We're just planning that at the moment. Burns Linares is a fight that I'm yeah, looking we'll to make. What's that, 7th maybe? Uh, yeah, there's a potential date of September 7th for that. Uh, Callum Smith, potential September date. I, I'd like to, I'd really like to do Callum in Liverpool on a Saturday night final. It's fucking hard to do, hard to do. Because I told you about the money he's, you know, that he's making. Saturday night final, I don't know how you do it without doing a few hundred grand. I know you're financially concerned about me, Coop. Oh, clearly. Uh -huh. um, Ed, what does the there's rumours of a date change or month change for Wilder Ortiz? Does that have any impact on anything you're doing whatsoever? Yeah, well, I'm involved in that actually. Uh, <laughs> not really. <laughs> no, uh, no, so, I, it's just surprising. I don't know. They were going to go. I mean, they announced the fight on Joshua Ruiz fight week, mm. and then gave a date and venue, and then obviously now it's going to be November. So. I just don't know how you do Wilder Ortiz in November and then Wilder Fury in February. You know? Hmm. So, we'll see. Like I said, I think there's a lot changing right now. I think a lot of people are starting to realise what they've been spending. Do you know when you kept saying something about from September you're going to see kind of... Mm -hmm. I don't know what you were alluding to. Actually. What I'm alluding to is we want to make much, much bigger Saturday Night Fight Nights. And 
that's what we'll be doing September, October, November. And yes, there will be Lomachenko Campbell, pay-per-view. There will be Joshua Rees, pay-per-view. Is there one in the middle? Is there a Brooke Khan? I don't know. Not Nothing planned at the moment. Um, there'll be... Even the next gens, like literally I was doing a next gen for October today and it feels like Saturday night fight. Like, Let me just get something. Well, whatever you tried to do, you didn't find it. What it was, I was showing a card from Joshua's boxing in Birmingham actually. And yeah, it wasn't very good. So I want to make the next gens almost like a Saturday night fight night and then take the Saturday night fight nights to another level. Okay. For the new season, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. But you did find this. I didn't see this one, yeah. Bloody hell. Is it? So you look half normal as a child then? That that actually that reminds me of my life now, which what that says is that would be that would have been a weekend or a, where my dad was around. Do you know what I mean? And that's like my life now. Because I can see from my face there, how old am I there? Four? Seven. Three or four? No, four or five. Yeah, I've always been handsome, haven't I? Yeah. yeah. Okay, anything else? Uh... No, life is good, mate. Life is good. Um, Rome was great last week, really good. Man. Yeah, it was great. I mean, we only had 2,000 in there. Held like 5,000, so it's tough. It's tough. Um, really senior. Yeah, but it, we're getting momentum. You know, ratings are good, interest is good. People are starting. It's, it's nice where people are actually thankful that you're making an effort to try and grow boxing in that market, you know? And it... it it's really rewarding when you're putting on shows where the fighters, the fans, the media, they're actually really excited about this complete rebirth of boxing in Italy. Spain's next. Mm, what Spain's part of Spain? Or everywhere. Ibiza? <laughs> Spain, Spain has a lot of potential for growth in boxing and we're seeing it already. So yeah, Spain is next. Looking to do at least one event in Spain this year. What part? No, uh, well, you've got like Bilbao, He's really popular, obviously, for Laranja. You've got um, also Santander around there, not the bank, where Sergio Garcia fights out of. So, but you're seeing some decent-sized crowds now for, for events. So Spain's going to be an important market to us. And Germany at some point as well. Do you want to, uh, do you want to give us a couple of tickets? For? The old, the old lot watching. For which fight? For this weekend? Oh yeah, well I've only done 2,000, so yeah. I can give, we'll give two away. Right, so we're going to do something a little bit different, because I okay. think it's no, always... Well, why don't we do, look. No, no, no. No, I've got an idea. Right. Well, what was you going to do? You say your idea, let me hear that first. By the way, if you get the tickets, we might also chuck this in. Okay. Go on. Who is... that? Not Jim McDonnell, obviously. That's Jim McDonnell, that's yours truly. Who is that? Right, so are we saying... Right, the first person... The first person that takes me and you in a tweet... And says that, wins two says, tickets for seven. Wins two tickets. Simple as that. On Twitter. Yeah. I'm sorry if you don't have Twitter, but it's the easiest way of us doing this. People on YouTube moan because that, some of them have got Twitter. Get on Twitter then. Um, who is that? Okay. Do you know who that is? No. Can you just write it down? Mm-hmm. I'll text you now. And if you now. If you want an extra ticket, I'm going to throw this in. Oh, wait. Tell us who took the photograph. <laughs> On the back. Um, who texted him? There you go, I've messaged you. So I'm not gonna lie. Um, okay, so you know who that is. The first person, tag Eddie on Twitter and myself and... But you have to say who it is and then you have to say just something like, or, or just who it is. 
I was gonna say why you should win the world tickets? champion, like you know what his achievements were. Oh, like or not? No, okay, no. Just I thought you meant them tell why they should also have the tickets. <laughs> no, I deserve. Dylan White's giving away five tickets this week. Is he? Mm. On IFO, we'll work that out. Okay. If he's still, if he's still doing it. Don't do. forget tomorrow. Um, Ross, what's the venue tomorrow? Potterfields. Potterfields. Right by London Bridge, right? Overlooking Tower Bridge. Overlooking Tower Bridge. Beautiful setup outdoors for the open workout. Get yourself down there from 12 o'clock. So it's in a field? It's not in a field. It's on at some grassland right by Tower Bridge. Okay. Okay. Potter's Field. Yes. It starts at midday. What? Next to City Hall. Next to City Hall. Next to City Hall. Get yourself down there. Can we do some stuff where... You know when Chisora done that 500 quid thing the other time? Yeah. We're doing, we want to do some stuff like that. Okay. So get people in. You two, whoever does the most press ups, wins the dough. Something like that. A little bit of interaction. All right, What's okay. the weather like tomorrow? Oh, glorious. Okay, <laughs> good. There you go. We'll get that. Okay. Whoa, come on, bro. No, 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 no. Ah, here we go. How much is on each of these? Have a look, it says. Okay. Hey. JD Sports. One of our major sponsors. To be honest, if you ever need anything athletic, if you want a fresh pair of trainers, if you want some running gear, if you want just to look good in the gym, if you want to just look good in a leisure kind of environment, JD Sports is the undisputed high street retail shop destination and online. So what we're doing is JD Sports. Oh hey! 200 sheets really? on that one. Really? On that one? And 200 sheets on that one. Right. Come down tomorrow. Okay. If you come down to the workout tomorrow, the first person to come up to me and say, all right, geezer, give us a 200 sheets of JD. You get that one. Right? All right, remember what you're saying here. Yeah? All right, geezer, give us the 200 sheets of JD. Yeah. There's that one. Yeah. What should we do with this one? They come up to you and go, hey, Eddie. They're all, all the marketing guys and they're moaning. Can you hear? Oh, JD will be delighted. Shut up. Shut up. Uh, Tossers. The first ones that come up to you and go, yes, all right, geezer, give us the 200 sheets. That's that one. And that one is, I'm busy. Just says that to you. Okay. Yeah. Mate, I'm busy. Mate, I'm oh, busy. Mate, I'm mate. busy. Anything from that interview, yeah. you win that one. First person. Yeah. What if they shout it from a bit of a way away? No, they've got to be, I've got, oh, I've, got, got be, I've got to be in reaching right, distance. Right, you've got to be in reaching distance. Yeah. You can't shout at me. If we're on the tube tomorrow on the way there and you go, I'm busy. I'm not, you've got to be there. At the workout. And it's got to be at the workout. Yeah. It can't be en route to the workout. It's got to be at the venue. Mate, give me the 200 sheets for JD. I'm busy. Mate. Okay. Mate. All right. Hey, Han, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV and look forward to it tomorrow. Look forward to it. Can See you there. Don't miss Saturday night. Who's going to be there? The workout. No. All, all the combatants. No, 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 oh, right, right. No, 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 no. Couple of Ring Magazine undisputed. Is he there? Yeah. I am Phil. Anyone else? Um, yeah, a lot of people there said. Don't miss it, baby. Cheers.